Hey folks, Alan Manick, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video is about the different types of body hammers and what they're used for. So let's check it out. So in a recent video, I had a comment asking if I could make a video about what the different types of body hammers are used for. And I thought that was a great idea. I've got all of my body hammers here set up and ready to show you what they are used for and what I personally use them for, as well as I'm gonna talk about a few that I don't personally own. So first and foremost are these compact body hammers, these low profile design flat faced hammers. I did a whole video comparing the two of these and discussing the uses of compact body hammers hammers quite recently in fact. You can check out the link here and go see for yourself to see what I think about these hammers. Next up is this hammer from Snap-on, the BF603B. It is a general pick hammer. On the front side you've got your normal flat face on there. It has a 24 inch radius. The reason it has a 24 inch radius and not just a true flat face is so that while you're striking if you get a little bit of an angle in your swing you don't have to worry about digging in the edge of your hammer. If your flat face was truly flat, you would almost certainly dig in the edge of your hammer on every other hammer blow. It'd be very, very difficult to get that thing true flat to the face of that material. On the other end, you've got this nice long pick point. Now, the idea with this is for bumping up small areas. Say as you're bumping out sheet metal, as you're repairing dents in metal, you kind of get to a point very often where you have just small areas that need to be brought up. Something like this picture here, which is a roof skin I've been working on. It still has areas that need to be brought up, just small areas. So what I could do with that is I could take this pick end, I could go to that small area from up underneath and drive up that small area. It'll create a high spot where that small area was previously low. Then I can come through with a hammer and dolly and flatten that high spot back out and level it out with the surrounding area. Knock it back into place now hopefully in the raised position that I wanted it to be in. When this one came new, it had a very sharp point on it. I dulled it out to make it a little more usable for me. When it's got that sharp point, you end up with these really fine, sharp, stretched out little spots when you use it. I don't like that at all. It's definitely a fine line walking in between those spots, trying to get those things up and down and just where you want them. Something that I've been known to use this for instead of driving up areas is actually to massage them up. Use it like a pick, leverage it against some inner structure, maybe use the flat face against an inner panel, and then massage with that pick end, just push the metal up. I have found that to be a pretty useful use for this hammer in the past. Next up is this Martin Tools 160G bumping and dinging hammer. This hammer has a square face on one side and a round face on the other side, both measuring in at one and a quarter inches. Now you might notice that this hammer has a lot of material in it. The heads are much thicker than your standard body hammer, and the overall head design itself is just a thicker and sturdier design. The idea of this is that you have more weight on a smaller surface area to create more pounds per square inch on a single hammer blow. This hammer is really intended for heavier metal use. If you're working on an older truck with like 16 gauge fenders or 14 gauge firewalls, this hammer being heftier is better for hammering on those heavier materials by creating that smaller surface area with more weight behind it. It's creating more force in that hammer strike zone. The thing that personally I most commonly use this hammer for is for the square face. I'll use this as a corking or caulking tool and I'll go ahead and butt that right up against say a body line. Get that right up next to a straight line, rest it on there and strike it with another hammer so that I can use that flat face, not have to worry about having the corners dig in and get it crisp right up nice along a body line or an edge. Next up is this Martin Tools 168 HC, a high crown hammer. The high crown hammer pretty much says it all. This has a nice hefty radius to the face of it. The idea of that is for concave or convex shapes. Now on the other side of this hammer, you have this flat chisel point. It's a triangular shape. It's one inch wide. It has a nice little radius, but still be pretty crisp angle on there. I'll very often use this like I do with the square face hammer, where I'll bump this right into that corner, right up against the body line and tap on it to go ahead and crisp up a sharp radius, a sharp corner that I'm trying to create. Next up is the Snap-on BF617B body hammer. This has a large flat face on it. 
This thing measures an inch and seven eighths across. This is really great for once you're getting toward your finish work. Once you're getting to the point where you don't need to really knock dents big time, you just need to smooth out the final structure of that piece. This is great for that. Spinning this hammer around, we've got the waffle face hammer on the other side of there, the shrinking hammer. These come in a range of shapes and sizes, square, smaller, larger, the twisty ones that when you strike, they, they twist and they shrink more. These serve no purpose but scarring metal. The thing about these is they're supposed to take all these little dots in the waffle surface to create a shrinking design. As you strike into there, every little point is raising a little spot in the material theoretically drawing all that material together because it's raising up areas in that pattern. I have never found this to be properly functional as a shrinking hammer. The times that I've tried it have been times of desperation. And every single time I've ever used it in desperation, I regretted it. Because in the end, I could see these stupid little marks all over my finished panel and I hated myself for doing it. It didn't achieve the shrinking like it's supposed to do. It just left scarred material and I hate to see scarred material. Next up is the Old Faithful door skinning hammer. I adore a door skinning hammer. I do not know how I ever lived without having one of these in my arsenal. The idea of this hammer is intended for installing door skins. They're not as tall overall so that when you're working on a door skin, a lot of times you don't have a wide flange to be working with on door skins. These allow you to get nice wide surface area blows on that thing and not hit the inner structure and damage it and scar it up while you're working. You've got the straight one and you've got the bent angle one. The bent angle one is great if you say have a door on a stand, you're sitting on a seat next to it and you're hammering away on that thing to fold that door skin around its flange. It's great because that angle is just a natural angle for when you're striking with a hammer so you don't have to strain your wrist to get that nice straight blow on that material. But where I do use this all the time is reverse curves and concave shapes. This picture here is a perfect example of an area where I did use this hammer. This cowl panel in the 1941 Sterling I've been working on has just this reverse concave curve shape into it. It is a pain in the butt in any other means but with something like this door skinning hammer. I adore a door skinning hammer. If you're looking to build out a hammer set, I really, really recommend it. It's probably, if not the second hammer, then like the third hammer you should pick up when you pick up body hammers. Next up is actually a fairly rare hammer. This is Snap-on BF615. This is a reverse curve hammer. This is one that I lived without for a long time, but I really like having it now. Unfortunately, nobody really makes this hammer anymore. The only company that was making a hammer like this anytime recently was Fairmount Tools through Eastwood. Unfortunately, they no longer make it. And Eastwood has dialed back their Fairmount tool selection of hammers. I contacted them asking them about why they were doing that and what was happening. They just let me know that they've cut back on the number of Fairmount hammers they have. Whatever's on their website right now is all that's available and this is not among them. It is flat one direction and it is heavy radius the other direction. So it's not great if it's a truly concave like a bowl shape, but it is great if that thing is a reverse curve. I mentioned all about reverse curves in my metal shaping terms video. If you haven't checked that out, you might learn something there if you're unfamiliar with reverse curves. This hammer is really useful for those shapes because it just has a heavier radius than the door skinning hammer does. So if it's a really tight radius on that reverse curve shape, this is really handy in that case. Next up is the Martin Tools 150G Long Reach Dinging Hammer. This thing is a really handy hammer for dinging dents. It has flat faces on both ends, nice long reach design. It's got a one and a quarter inch face on one end and a inch and nine sixteenths face on the other end. I primarily use this for the inch and a quarter face. I find that when I'm working in an area, either a small area where a larger hammer might strike things like body lines or something that I'm worried about hitting, this can be really handy for that. But I also find that when I just have small raised up areas, just one little spot that I need to focus on, this can actually be really handy for gently knocking down that one specific area. Next up is the Martin Tools 165G. This hammer measures in just over 17 inches long. This is a exceptionally useful hammer, rarely. <laughs> 
I do use it from time to time, however, the times that I use it are very infrequent. You have a strong point on one end of this odd oblong kind of football egg-shaped design head, and then you have a much more rounded face on the other end. This is originally intended for kind of like Finn, something like a 57 Chevy. Get up into a Finn area and pick at things. Knock off those small spots that you might need to do with like a pick hammer that you couldn't reach in with a normal length hammer. I do not use this hammer often, but when I do, it works beautifully for what it's intended for. However, it's usually hard to see where you're hitting with it because you're reaching way out there. So trying to hit the exact right spot takes quite a bit of practice. So this is definitely not one I highly recommend. You need to have one of these, but I do find it useful from time to time. I should mention slappers. I did a whole video about slappers. They are really useful. I definitely recommend them. Check out that video if you want more information. Now, another hammer that I don't own is the old donkey dick, better known as the fender bumper. The idea of that one is it is obviously a very strange design head, but that is for working say a fender lip, something where you're going to have a hard time swinging a regular style hammer in that area. Fender lips will often have a wire edge that's adding strength, it'll be multi-layered at that area, or it'll have bent edges and such flanges that are creating more strength, so you need more driving force to move that metal. On the back side of that hammer is a flat spot so you can use it as a corking hammer, a caulking hammer, so you can go ahead and butt it up against a piece of material and strike it with another hammer to drive that material so you don't have to be swinging the hammer to do it. That said, sooner or later I need to pick one up because it's just great to have options. You know, at the end of the day, these hammers are just exceptionally handy tools for shaping and cleaning up sheet metal. I own a bunch of them, but I don't own nearly as many as I wish I did. Having this range of hammers is not a necessity. You do not need to have five different flat-faced hammers with different size faces on them. However, having options is exceptionally useful. I never like to get into a situation where I look at something and go, you know, I could fix that if only I had X, Y, Z. I try to give myself options. I want to pull open the drawer and pick the right hammer for the situation that I'm approaching at that moment. Something you could pick up to help you learn a lot more about this is a pretty affordable book. It is called The Key to Metal Bumping. It is available from the folks at Martin Tools. It runs about $15 to pick it up. It's a short, little, easy to read book that has wonderful information about on dolly, off dolly, dinging, dent repair, all kinds of stuff in there you will find useful if you're into metal shaping, trying to repair dents, working in the auto body industry. If you've never read that book, I really recommend picking it up. It's originally from the folks at Fairmount Tools. Since Martin Tools took over Fairmount a long time ago, and though Fairmount is back in some different capacity in Eastwood, that's a whole complicated thing, but that book is available from the folks at Martin Tools. It does even have a little breakdown of different body hammers and telling you the purposes of those different body hammers like I was doing here. All right, folks, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, smash that like button. Let me know you liked it. Go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Do you have a range of body hammers? Are you an addict for body hammers? Are you always looking for them at swap meets? What do you think of body hammers? Do you just have one? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.